The Event Tech Podcast is brought to you by Event Hero. All of the event management software features in the world are worthless if they don't easily integrate with your registration system and other systems you need to make your event happen the way you want it to. Stop making superhuman effort and start using your superpowers. Event Hero provides features you need, like check-ins, lead retrieval, analytics, and alerts, all seamlessly integrated with your favorite registration system and other back-end tools. To learn more and to get started, visit eventhero.io. Welcome to the Event Tech Podcast. I'm John Federico, your host and executive producer. And that means I'm the guy who turns the knobs, posts the shows, and finds the guests. Uh, and this week is no exception. Joining us today uh, from Uruguay, of all places, is Rafael Harmel, uh, a co-founder of Speechio. And I came across Speechio, actually, because they recently uh, won uh, a big award uh, at IMAX, among great company, which we'll we'll talk at shortly. Uh, talk about shortly. So I, when I had seen that announcement about their their winning the contest, I said, well, it, you know, it, given the the company they had, uh, the competition that they had, uh, I said, you know what, I have to reach out to these guys and uh, and get them on the show. And so here we are, Raphael, welcome. Thank you very much. Hi, John. I'm Thank happy you. to be I, here. I appreciate Thanks. you. Uh, I appreciate you joining for me. And for those who, who of course, as I just mentioned, um, we are multiple time zones, uh, you know, in, in di we are in multiple time zone difference here. Uh, and as well as, uh, you know, all the things that can go wrong on the internet. So there might be a delay here or there, but for the most part, uh, things seem pretty solid. So just let everyone else know. And uh, one more thing, we should do a little housekeeping before we get started with Raphael. Um, if you're listening to this show in your ears, chances are uh, you found it on iTunes. If you did, we appreciate that. Uh, please head on over to iTunes and uh, give us a quick review if you enjoyed the show uh, and uh, maybe a few stars. It helps us get the word out about, about the show and uh, it helps us in our mission, which is to educate planners and uh, let, let them know about the tools, the event tech uh, tools that are on the market uh, and how they can use them. Um, if you're watching us right now, you'll see me waving uh, and uh, that means you probably found us on YouTube. Uh, that's great. If you could head on over there. Um, maybe give us a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate that. Again, it helps support our mission. Um, you can also find us on um, places like SoundCloud and Stitcher and really just give a, you know, give a quick search uh, for the Event Tech Podcast and you'll see we'll pop up in lots of places. All right, so let's get started. Raphael, uh, Speechio. So you guys won, uh, th let's see, uh, oh, the, the inaugural winner of the IMAX America Event Manager Blog Technology Startup Competition. And you had some pretty stiff competition. Um, in fact, uh, a lot of those folks have been a guest, uh, have been guests on this show. Uh, so tell us what that was all about. So actually, it was a competition organized at Atmex by uh, the event uh, manager blog uh, by Julius and other people. And uh, it was uh, an attempt to be the first startup competition at IMX to kind of show to the event planner there like uh, what uh, were the exact, the exact news from the startup scene with innovating every day, uh, uh, creating some new event apps uh, for, for event planners. And as I said, you had some, you, you had some stiff competition. So, uh, you know, there, again, I bring this up, not, not, to, not to blow smoke, but, uh, you know, uh, there are some really great companies. And so, you know, hats off to you. There was Attendify, CrowdMics, uh, GroupMeet, and I'm just, I'm just talking about the ones that have been on our, sh uh, been on our show. Uh, Slido, uh, Topi, so uh, all great companies, uh, and including the ones I, I haven't met yet, uh, but I, I know of them. So uh, congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it was a bit tough, but it was funny, you know, we're used to these competitions where you just have like a, a few minutes precise, like one minute or two minutes to make your presentation, and that's it. And then your voice is good, but it's extremely exciting. It is, yes, it can be very exciting. It's tough though, you know, when someone says, tell me your life story, and, uh, but only in two minutes, you know, and suddenly you're like, okay. Ah, what, okay. <laughs> yes. it, it, it's kind of difficult. Um, actually, but we'll get to that, not your life story, but Speechio's life story. Uh, mm -hmm. So before we go there, tell us what Speechio is. Now, I think it, it, you have a very, uh, I think the name is, a very, uh, is apropos, uh, so I think it could give people some idea as, as to what it is, um, but give our audience a, a, a quick background, what is Speechio? 
Okay. So globally, SpeedShow is a tool to improve uh, learning and to improve the feedbacks. So how does it work? A speaker goes on stage, uh, use SpeedShow and, uh, and upload this slide within SpeedShow, and you can share them in live to the attendees. And then the attendees can access these slides, but also, most important, capture all the information which matters to them, like a specific slide, specific part of the voice of the speaker, and they can also take notes. And at the end, they get an automatic summary of all the things which matters to them. So they can easily share it to, to their teammates or to, their, to other people. So basically, it's the best tool for them to capture all the information which matters to them. And then all these captures are then gathered and analyzed by SpeedShow and then sent back to the speaker for him to know uh, who is interested by what. We also can give this information back to event planners. Like this, they can really know who is excited by what, who understood what, who was engaged uh, in the conference. So basically, it's a tool to, to improve the knowledge loop between the speaker and the attendees. On one side, to have feedback, or on the other side, to capture the content. Got it. So, so it reminds me of the old school um, you know, audience response systems, except back, you know, way back in the day, which wasn't all that long ago, um, you had these devices with a few buttons and you could take poll, you could, you could get feedback by getting, uh, just getting feedback with simple polls and that sort of thing. So this mm -hmm. just takes it, this is just the, the cloud and smartphone version, you know, taken to, you know, many, uh, <laughs> I was going to say the next yeah. level, but it's, it's many levels above uh, those old systems. Yeah, exactly. There's a power, there's a common part. It goes further, but uh, there's a big common part, yeah. Okay, so now, so Speechio, how did you guys get started? Um, and what was the, you know, what was, what was the impetus behind it? Wh why did you say, you know, I've got to, we've got to solve this problem? Yeah, so in the team, we attend a lot of conferences and we were a bit frustrated. And I said, uh, part of the organization of uh, an international conference, and I noticed there were uh, some issues. So the main issue that we faced as attendees was, uh, that there was no really tool adapted to be able to capture easily the content from the speaker. Even if we are in an extreme uh, technological world, everybody's a smartphone in their pockets, it was always a nightmare to get the slide of the speaker or like uh, to be able to take notes efficiently while he was speaking. So this is the main uh, issue that we're trying to solve. And we also did like some uh, customer discovery, like uh, going to interview speakers and event organizer. And we noticed that one extremely important point for them is to get relevant feedback. And actually for, for now, the system to get relevant feedback is not, it's not that efficient uh, because there is, no really, uh, uh, there is no incentive for the attendees to give feedback to the speakers. So we, we thought a lot, like we brainstormed a lot, and we fell on this idea, why not get this feedback from the attendees just from, uh, from the captures of the things that they want to keep. So this was a smart move that we, that we found on its uh, our difference uh, with uh, the other event app which are existing in the same domain. It's really not, not asking the attendees to give feedback, but much more giving them a tool to capture everything. And this capture are the feedback that we give back to the speaker and the event managers. So it's, it's implicit feedback, I guess you could say. So when, yeah. and I, if I as the attendee am, uh, if I'm capturing uh, maybe, maybe not the entire uh, speech, but perhaps there's a slide here or there that I decide I want to save. Is that, is that kind of the, the, the gist? Exactly. So, so, so I don't have to say, give me the whole, give me the whole presentation. I can no. just say, oh, wow, those are two really interesting points that I could share with my colleagues back at the office. I want to save that slide, and I, maybe I'll save, save this slide. You totally got it. Okay. Oh, I love that. So, so then, by, and now, so, and now I'm getting ahead of myself, because whenever I like a technology, as you can see from past episodes, <laughs> I get all excited and I try to jump in. Um, so I'll hold back a bit, but, <laughs> but one of the things I noticed uh, on your website, uh, so, and you'll have to please pardon me uh, if I don't pronounce his name properly. It's Sebastian Sicard. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Uh, but but uh, he's a product manager. And one of the things he said was it was great for him because apparently Sebastian uses, like many people do, um, he uses public speaking as a method of generating leads for, for what he does. He happens to be a product manager uh, and uh, what appears to be a, a, um, a lean startup expert. Um, and he loved the fact that uh, he, could, you, he could get leads uh, on his speeches uh, by sharing the key points of his events and measuring audiences' interest. Um, and I can, I can totally see how that works. But So now the question becomes, how do you generate leads 
uh, unless you know who the people are. So I would imagine there must be some registration component, correct? Yeah, you're totally right. Actually, we provide, a, we, we try to not, uh, how do you say, to not block the people with uh, like a basic regist registration so they can start using SpeechShow to take their notes without being uh, registered because we want a uh, user to jump in and uh, not to have too much friction because you're attending an event so you don't have any much time, you know, to register. Right, right. But once, once they want to keep it and put it on the cloud, and uh, once they want to create bookmarks, they have to, to register. It's, uh, we have to do this so to, to be able to upload all the captures to the, to the, to the cloud. And this is where, where we identify uh, with that is and where we can match them uh, with the specific conference. Got it. And that's a great, uh, but I love the fact that it's very low friction. If there's a low barrier to entry. I can mm -hmm. immediately start uh, getting involved and taking notes and not having to worry about registering and possibly missing something. It's only when I want to save it, perhaps, that, that where I, oh, okay, well, if I have to save it. I have to create an account and go back and get it later. That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, that's great. So right now, so so you, so the business was started in uh, in France, uh, and you still have someone in Paris, uh, but and you're in Uruguay, uh, mm -hmm. and who else is on the team, and where are you? And the third one is in the Rio de Janeiro. We're all originally from Paris, but we are now a distributed team, according to to our lives, personal lives. Okay, and that's just the way of the world these days. Uh, so uh, it, it's funny because we're based here in New York, uh, and our head of marketing is is uh, about three four hours north uh, in in Massachusetts. Um, but really, even the folks here in New York, we never know where we're where we're going to be, just depending on what we're working on. Uh, and so we don't have that sort of distance between us. But you know, we were we operate very much the same way. It's just we I find it's just very modern this way. It's just. You get together when you have to, but otherwise people are just off focusing and doing their own thing and, and they can interact using tools like this one. Uh, it, it's, it, it really is the new, the new way to work. Exactly. Uh, I love that. So, so let's, one of the things I, I, I mentioned before the show, as I do before every show uh, to my guests, is we like to, uh, our audience is primarily made up of planners. Uh, and so I want you to help me help them uh, to understand. <laughs> When, uh, when they should consider using a tool like yours, how it works, um, and how possibly they, they can get started, and of course, what all the benefits are. Uh, already, uh, you know, the benefits immediately when we're talking about the attendee, and I just put myself in that role in our, in our discussion moments ago, I, the benefits to me are absolutely clear, and, and I love it. But we still have other constituents. So before we talk about how it works and what we do, um, let's talk a bit more about the benefits for the speakers and for the organizers in a little more detail. How about let's start with the speakers? Okay, so for the speaker, basically, uh, now you, uh, I think you attend also a lot of events. There's uh, something which is really weird because we have many applications in the event industry, but like when the speaker is on stage, it's like a place where like technology is not existing at all. Technology doesn't have to be aware for sure, but like uh, why can't we help the speaker like with technology to, to just know if his speech was uh, really nice or really bad? Because for now, nobody can know. Like you're just speaking on stage as a speaker, you ask the person on the right on the stage, was my speech good? And the guy will say, yeah, yeah, it was great. But uh, <laughs> actually, we don't know, nobody knows. How can you know if the crowd is uh, like 4,000 people? How can you even know how was your speech? You know? So it's, uh, we're trying to really improve uh, this part for the speaker, for him to have like really uh, metrics saying, uh, okay, uh, uh, I don't know, like 20% uh, of the people were excited by this point, 50% of the people didn't understand at all this point, and like 20% uh, of the people were extremely excited to know more about this point. So like this, it helps the speakers to kind of have feedback to, to be able to improve his speech, but also to be able to uh, contact the attendees who wants to know more, for instance, or uh, uh, so they can start uh, talking and start to engage more the people. Because I suppose if you're a speaker, you're on stage, you're here to communicate with people. So you would love to have uh, the feedback. Absolutely. Now, do you provide uh, interactions? Do you provide data and feedback in real time? Or is, do, you, can, do you think that's a distraction to the speaker and they should just get that information as soon as they step off the stage? Yeah. Actually, we... Uh, 
technology wise it's uh, we deliver the, the all this feedback in real time but as you're describing it can be really hard uh, to to handle this live because uh, as a speaker you're on stage you're already stressed out maybe your slide doesn't work you just change something the light is not good the microphone so you're stressed out so uh, we are not recommending every, anything but I For the first time, it's maybe wiser to not use the reporting in live. Maybe maybe just check after the, to see how what the performance of the speech is. But then, for experienced user, it can be really smart to use it uh, in live too. But uh, you have to to be really a professional speaker, like confident with what you do. But if we take this to the to the to the event manager part, for instance, the event manager can directly uh, check in real time because he's less engaged as a speaker during his speech. So can be interesting for the event manager. Yeah, I, I, can, I can agree with that. I've done my, my fair share of, of speaking. And um, I'm lucky that I can just keep, as long as I have my current slide and my next slide, that's enough for me. I can't take in any more information at that point. That's all I need to see. Uh, unless it comes to Q&A, by the way. So do you, is there an opportunity uh, within the system to, to, uh, to ask questions of the speaker? Is that the sort of, because that I think would be very helpful, is if someone could type in the questions and they could kind of show up in a queue very similar to what we all see in webinars and stuff, right? Where people add their questions and then at the end, uh, they can be answered. Is that, a, is that a component? It's a component which is planned. It's not uh, for the version which is going to be released uh, in the next month. But uh, we're really, as we're really focusing on the interaction between the speaker and the attendee, we need to have this block. So it's, uh, it's planned. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that makes sense. Yeah, um, got it. Okay, so now, uh, for the uh, organizer, mm -hmm. uh, now what what do they get? I mean, what's that? What's their their benefit? Now, I, I, there's the obvious benefit, right? Which is that their attendees have a good experience, um, and and they didn't have to do anything except set up <laughs> set up speechio. Uh, uh, but but what what else does the organizer get? What what value does it give to them? Mm -hmm. So apart from the reporting part that you already understood, which can help them to kind of measure which uh, were the most impactful speeches. Right, so that's uh, what I want to talk about a bit more in detail. So, so okay. if, I, if, I, if I get one of those reports, or actually, I get all of those reports, so I can, I, do I see that in aggregate? So, in other words, uh, I determine the level of engagement based on the interaction, and then I can see which performed better than the other, or, and then also drill down to see what people saved and what questions there may have been. Uh, in an individual session, is that is that the gist the gist of it? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, actually it's a bit tricky because like uh, people who are using uh, a tool like this are uh, engaged for sure, but people who are not using it could be engaged but might be not using the tool. So this is the first thing to know for sure. Not everybody is using this kind of tool in the attendees. But then uh, once you have the metrics, you can uh, easily be able to. Uh, Maybe able to uh, to to see the topics which were the most exciting for the attendees, so you can track uh, easily what are the trends maybe for your next uh, event. Like uh, if people are excited about I don't know about like uh, the specific uh, a specific uh, topic, but uh, like new marketing, and if you see that like all the people in the in the in the speech were extremely excited about it, you can maybe plan another conference the next year on this topic, for instance. So it can help to, to have people more excited about your content and uh, help you select more speakers who have like a, a better, uh, maybe a better presence, a better way of uh, saying things, or but also uh, better content or more, more updated content. So, so this is a part of it, like uh, being able to measure the quality of the speeches. Yes, I see that. Now, what about what about taking a, what about those people though that, that you just described who could be very well engaged but not taking notes? And there are plenty of speeches, right, where they are very engaging, but they're more inspirational uh, or they're more, uh, you know, their topic is, is broader and not necessarily something I, wanna, I want to write down. I don't know. What about the sort of light interactions? I'm, I'm thinking of Facebook in this, mm -hmm. right? It's like, so comments are hard because people have to think <laughs> and they have to type and they have to know how to spell, although most people don't bother yeah. with the spelling part. But if you, if you don't know about your Facebook feed, but mine. Um, so what about adding things like that where someone could say, oh, I, I like that or, uh, or there's a, a, a poll or you know, rate this slide or this, this part of the speech from one to 10. So all it takes is a tap. Have you guys mm -hmm. considered something like that to kind of 
add to the data to make the data a bit richer? Actually, it's uh, so for sure there is a note taking part, but uh, when we say capture, uh, the data attendees are able to capture all the content that uh, matters to them. They basically have a just uh, a big button to press, and this button uh, allows them to create, like uh, with a single click, a bookmark on a specific part of the content, and they can share it easily uh, on the social network. So it's really, it can be seen like for also to help the lazy people or people who are maybe just <laughs> tired because uh, like uh, you're going to, uh, I don't know, IMX, there are like a mini conference uh, during uh, several days. It's, uh, it's physical, you know, it's ex extremely interesting. But if you want to keep the rhythm of getting all the important information for your business, sometimes you're just too tired, so you won't take notes. So it might be a, a tool to help uh, the attendees to continue to get and keep the information which matters to them really, really easily with a single click. Got it. And, and my, my apologies. I forgot about the bookmarking feature. I knew I didn't, I guess I didn't think of it as a bookmark and that, that is essentially the, the same thing, right? That's the, like, that's the Facebook, that's your Facebook like button is, is the exactly, book. exactly. But okay. it's, uh, it's not only like, it's like, I like, I don't like, I want, uh, I want to, to, to type my uh, specific text because it makes me think about something. Like you get uh, so different categories. Exactly, you read my mind. So you could almost imagine where if someone bookmarked it, that's a like. If someone bookmarked it and shared it on social media, well, they really liked it, you know, and so on. You know, you could kind of, and so the speaker and the organizer can kind of look at that as, a, as, a, as, as an engagement metric. Yeah, exactly. I like that. That's, I love that actually. <laughs> We're all about data here at Event Hero. So, uh, you know, anything that, 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 that provides data and, and that, that the organizer can actually use or the speaker can use, mm. uh, you know, we're, we love that kind of thing. We're, 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 ga we're data geeks here. So, yeah, you know, yeah for sure, for sure. And the thing is because like uh, there's always uh, like a, uh, uh, why has this data? There's always a scare like about like uh, stealing data from people. We don't want to do uh, at all this. It's really like uh, people who want to use speech are able to, uh, to, to decide to connect or, to, to create a profile or not. So if they want to stay like uh, uh, unknown, they can. Uh, but they get more, more uh, value if they connect because speaker can get back to them. So if they don't connect, you know, uh, we just uh, have no way to put them in touch with the speaker. So it's really important for us and uh, we think it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's one of the top people. So like uh, tracking, tracking, but like also keeping, uh, keeping the attendees safe in a way. Yes, yes, I, I, I can see that. And people do value their privacy, especially in those situations. So uh, when, you, when you say keep them safe, it's, you may, yeah. may not mean that literally, but, but some people just don't like necessarily like to expose themselves, put, them else, put themselves out there like that. So I, I, can, I can see that as a benefit. Okay, so let's talk about this whole process. So I'm sure I've got, uh, you know, I'm sure I've got plenty of people who are listening in right now who have said, I like this tool, I'd like to use it. Now, first, I should point out to everyone, not to disappoint you, um, but uh, there's a waiting list. They got you, so you guys are in beta right now, correct? Totally. So you'll have to uh, reach out to Raphael, maybe tell him you, you heard about it on the show, uh, and, and maybe he'll, uh, uh, he'll get you, he'll move you further in the queue. Um, but, uh, so you'll have to reach out directly to Raphael, and, and of course, we'll put his contact information. Uh, you'll, you, he will have him give his contact information uh, at the end of the show. So, so how does the process begin? Uh, so I reach out to you and I say, Raphael, I'd like to use this in my upcoming conference. Now what? Yeah, for sure. So it's just for the beta part where you have to contact us directly uh, in the future when it's going to be publicly released. Uh, everything's going to be automatic. So basically, uh, we will create uh, an account for, for the event planner. Then the event planner will be able to create an event on different uh, speeches for all uh, of these events. And uh, then, uh, then he will be able to, to share to a speaker for each uh, speech, uh, the, the, a link to be able for the speaker to, to share and upload this content. So this is a preparation part. It's just before the event. Sure. So we create the event, the speech, and we put the content. When it's done, the speaker can, uh, can go on stage. And uh, there is a simple link which is, sh which is shared to him, which helps him connect to, uh, directly to, to these conferences. So it's just like a speechshow.com slash one, two, three, four, or via a QR code, which, is, uh, which can uh, work out or not, depending on the case. So then all the attendees are able to connect in live to the conference and see the slide of the speaker. And then they can start taking notes, creating bookmarks, 
saying, oh, this is interesting, or I'm lazy, I ju but I just want to keep this uh, because I'm lazy, or I'm too tired, I want to, to keep that. <laughs> on All right, well, well that, I got that. So let, let's take yeah. a step back for a minute. So, so the organizer, they come in, the, the planner, they set, they set up uh, an event working mm -hmm. with you. So there's a schedule involved, obviously, right? Because I would imagine they, they're going to manage, the organizer's going to manage a, a chronological schedule and assign uh, a slot to each speaker or a speaker to each slot, I should say, mm -hmm. right? So some, exactly. some sort of scheduling tool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and through that tool, the, uh, they then uh, give access to that slot, that session, to the speaker. So does the speaker actually log in to Speechio and have the ability to prepare uh, their, their session uh, within the service? Yeah, for sure. Like all the people that we call administrators of the of the events, which are the event planners, uh, event organizers, and speakers, uh, have to have an account uh, for us to be able to match uh, their data somewhere. You know, so they just have to create an account, and then when they are set as admin of the ad administrators of their events, they can then uh, upload the content and uh, change the details and add more information. Got it. So the so the uh, organizer manages the uh, uh, the details of each session, including things like uh, the slides. Let's say if there are slides. Yeah, yeah. Maybe because there are different cases, uh, there are different uh, scenarios. But uh, like for uh, for single speaker, it's going to be different. But for an event manager, for sure, it's going to be the event manager who handles everything: the event creation, the speeches creation, and the content upload. Got it. Okay, so, so the organizer create, creates the schedule and then they prepare uh, each of the sessions uh, for, we'll call it delivery at this point, mm -hmm. so that the slides are there, uh, each session gets a URL, which I'm sure you generate automatically, uh, mm -hmm. so that when the attendees arrive, they can launch that URL uh, either in a, on a tablet, a computer, or a smartphone, and they can, they can follow along. And it's all done in a browser, by the way, right? I, I, one thing I Yeah, thought, yeah, we didn't talk about it yet. It's a web app for now because we, we think there is less friction. Like uh, I can well, Wi-Fi can be tricky on events, and uh, like downloading an app is always a big problem. On uh, it's uh, it's really simple for everybody. Yes, but and and uh, the modern browsers today are so feature rich that this is definitely the kind of application where you can simply just deliver it uh, yeah. in the browser and have a great experience. Yeah. Okay. So now, um, so now as the as the speaker, I really don't have anything else to do. I provided my slides to the organizer. I'm done, mm -hmm. right? For the most part. Yeah, you're done, but then, but then. the life starts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So now, am I presenting? Am I presenting uh, off of my? Um, am I presenting off of Speechio, or am I presenting from Keynote or uh, or PowerPoint or PDF or what? I, actually, you're totally free to do whatever you want. Uh, basically, for now, for the first version, it's only uh, using an internal player. But uh, it's not restrictive to uh, not using PowerPoint and uh, Keynote. People can use PowerPoint and Keynote. Uh, the, the only trick is like uh, just for the event manager to uh, to have uh, the technical team to have speech running in parallel and change the slides accordingly to the speaker. Ah, okay, got it. So so uh, you're delivering slides as they are delivered on stage. Yeah. Let's say. yeah. Uh, they're not they're not just freely available to anyone who sits down and puts the URL in and they can skip ahead. You, you, it, it's a synchronized kind of delivery. Yeah, it's a synchronized kind of delivery. People can, uh, can decide to go off uh, the, the, the slide which is displayed by going uh, uh, to the next one or the previous one, but uh, once there's a new change, it's uh, come back to the, to the synchronization. Got it, okay, that makes sense. Uh, you know, it's funny, I, I get into the details here because uh, the details matter, and I know her because yeah. I, 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 I'm on the phone every day, you know, working with customers, and it's those little details that matter. It will, you know, sometimes those small details will make or break a customer's decision to, to work with you. So, so I always like to get in there so that people know exactly what they're getting, what they're getting into. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just to add a bit more on this one, if people uh, don't care about using PowerPoint or, or Keynote, they can directly use Speechio and control the slide directly from, this, from their phone. From for smaller conferences, it can be more suitable. Oh, that's great! So it is. So it can be used as a presentation tool by the speaker. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We just noticed that uh, many, as still many people are using uh, PowerPoint because they they like. Uh, their, I mean, it's a great tool, PowerPoint on Keynote to see the next no, it's slide. Not. Come on, yeah. don't be so nice. It's a horrible, <laughs> horrible tool. 
<laughs> no, I mean, I mean, it's so terrible to work here. Okay, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Most of the world is shit. Um, but, but yes, they, then they're no, stuck with their PowerPoint. Like they can't, you can't exactly. get them to give up their PowerPoint. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's a way to, 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 to make everybody happy. <laughs> Got it. No, that's, that's, that's a good point. Okay, love that. So, uh, and, then, and then we go in. So I know we, we, kind of, we kind of did this, had this discussion backwards, right? It wasn't necessarily in chronological order per se, um, but I think because we wanted to deliver, we wanted to talk about the value first and then the process. So then, uh, so then the speech is done and then all the data that we discussed, uh, the notes are taken, uh, the the um, the engagement is measured. Uh, the speaker gets the data they 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 need. Uh, the organizer gets the data they need, and everyone's happy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's great. Well, I, I love it. I, I really do, and I can I can genuinely see uh, why you guys took home uh, took home the prize uh, at IMAX. Um, so. Let me ask you about that, by the way. So, how did you give that demo? Did you was it a live demo, or did you was it slides, or did did you set up a, set something up for your speech? Is I mean, is that what you did? Did you did you set up Speechio for your presentation? How did how did it work? Actually, it's a uh, your your it's a, it's a really good question. A bit uh, like we we did uh, we are really in the startup scene accelerator programs. I don't know if it's. Uh, if uh, even manager knows this so well, and uh, but the thing is, when you do a presentation, it will be an advice for speakers too. Uh, Sometimes it's uh, it's uh, when the presentation is not long enough. Actually, it can be tricky to use this kind of, of tools. Our presentation was just two minutes, so I had to have an impact, and in two minutes, there was no possible way to have uh, any issue. So that's why uh, we didn't choose a speech at that time, but for longer sessions, starting at uh, from five minutes to ten to one hour. It's uh, really suitable. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it is only two minutes, so you're pitching the business, not demoing the business, and that's yeah, really exactly. what I was what I was getting at. It's yeah. there's like many many uh, well, like a lot of technology in events. Um, there's a lot of moving parts. Like there's a lot of setup. There's magic. Like when it all happens, it's magic, right? The speakers are in the room. They're giving their talk. The people are sitting there and they're doing. You know, they're 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 capturing notes and they're. Uh, keeping track of what interests them, but there was a lot of setup that goes into that, at, like most of these things. And so that's exactly why I asked the question. I was like, "Hmm, yeah. two minutes. Yeah. That's a lot of setup for Speechio to, you know, to, yeah. to make that happen." So, so it was yeah. really what? Were there any slides involved? I mean, I'm sure you showed them something. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Of Actually, course. we we it's too bad I can't share a slide, but we always start with the same image, which is a simple one. Uh, do you know Dory? You know the little fish, which is in the Nemo book movie. Yes, I love Dory. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves Dory. Dory has no memory, and this is uh, one of the reasons why we created Speechio because there were studies which were concluded, which concluded that uh, human uh, people, human beings, forget 90% of what they hear after 18 seconds without memorizing effort. And that's why we created Speechio. So th this uh, this works uh, quite every time. So this, it was uh, it started with uh, people laughing a lot, and uh, this is what we try to do also make people happy because events are extremely exciting. It can be seen as professional and boring, but I think they are extremely exciting. And uh, we try to add uh, a bit to the fun. I, I think that is perfect, actually, using Dory. And everyone loves Dory, right, as you said. Yeah. That she's the perfect, she's your typical attendee, I think. Yeah, yeah. Many and, uh, she, she's, uh, she's a bit like me. She's a bit like you. She'll be, she's a bit like everybody. You know? Exactly. <laughs> That's great. No, I tell them they're really good storytellers. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I, I may give you a call and, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, great. Well, Raphael, I think I think we've we've really given everyone a a, a good overview uh, of what of what Speechio does. Um, you know how they can reach you, what you're all about. Is there anything that I I, I failed to ask you uh, in this discussion that you want to make sure our listeners are aware of? I think it's good. Like, if, you know, we covered most of the points already. Speechio for the event uh, manager is really a tool to improve. As interaction, so interaction with the audience and no better the audience who have more metrics to be able to uh, quantify the quality of their events. Three really days. Okay, good. Well, I think we hit that actually. Excellent. So, Raphael, thank you so much. If people want to reach out to you and thank you for spending time with me today, how can they do that? Hmm. So, they can uh, contact uh, us at team, so T E A M, at speechio.com, so S P E E C H E O.com. And uh, we can uh, provide, depending on the profile, we can provide a, a better access because we are really looking to have feedback from uh, 
professionals who can tell us uh, what works well, what uh, can be improved, what is extremely exciting and less exciting. So we're really uh, looking for beta testers. We have already a lot, but we are still have uh, some slots open. So please contact us. Feel free and uh, help us uh, improve the ends. Oh, that's great. So you hear that, listeners. Uh, if you want to get early access to the tool and, and help kick the tires and provide some feedback, uh, I think that uh, it would be good for everyone. So definitely feel free to reach out to Raphael. All right. Raphael, thank you so much. Uh, to those of you listening, once again, a little housekeeping. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, if, you, if you're listening to us and you found us on iTunes, uh, head on over there and give us a quick review. We'd appreciate that. Uh, and if you're watching us on YouTube, well, that's good too. You know, give us a thumbs up. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. It helps us get the word out about the show. So until next time, this is John Federico for the Event Tech Podcast. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. The Event Tech Podcast is brought to you by Event Hero. All of the event management software features in the world are worthless if they don't easily integrate with your registration system and other systems you need to make your event happen the way you want it to. Stop making superhuman effort and start using your superpowers. Event Hero provides features you need, like check-ins, lead retrieval, analytics, and alerts, all seamlessly integrated with your favorite registration system and other back-end tools. To learn more and to get started, visit eventhero.io. Thank <laughs> you.